Hi everyone, today we are going to be discussing the Varus and Valgus nomenclature and its application to assessment of health. I've got Dr. Kathleen Martin here with us. She is a pediatrician and course director for Clinical Skills 1 here at WSOM. First we'll discuss the nomenclature and then how it applies in a clinical setting. So the important thing to remember about Varus and Valgus is that it's referring to the displacement of a limb segment relative to a more proximal limb segment. In a valgus deformity, the distal segment will be displaced laterally from the body. In a varus deformity, the distal segment will be displaced medially toward the body. A valgus force directed against the thigh will move it laterally relative to the hip, while a valgus force directed against the leg will move it laterally relative to the thigh. Varus and valgus are also commonly used terms when discussing the knee and injuries that occur to it and its associated ligaments. So here we can see the femur, tibia on the medial side, and fibula on the lateral side. A uh, varus force would be directed in a medial direction, so it would be trying to deflect the leg medially relative to the femur and that varus force is stopped by the lateral collateral or fibular collateral ligament here. So it's going to stop medial displacement. If that were to rupture, we'll detach it here, then you would actually have that displacement possible on testing. Reattach it now. We'll try the same thing from the other side. Force directed against a segment and driving it laterally is a valgus force. So I'm trying to push the leg lateral relative to the femur and that's stopped by the medial collateral ligament running from the tibia to the femur hence also sometimes called the tibial collateral ligament so valgus displacement is prevented by the medial collateral ligament and if I were to detach it then I'd have laxity on that side and I'd wind up with a valgus deformity or valgus displacement of the leg relative to the femur. This gets confusing when we discuss injuries or displacements that affect multiple segments. If the knee is hit from the lateral side, it results in genu valgus, lateral displacement of the leg at the knee. However, this force also causes immediate displacement of the thigh at the hip, coxa vera. The opposite situation where the knee is pushed from its medial side would result in genu varum and coxa valgus. Another context in which this is important is when assessing a patient who is bow-legged or knock-kneed. If your patient has tightness of the gluteal muscles or weakness of the adductors in the inner thighs, this may result in coxa valga and genu varum, also known as bow-legged. Laxity of the gluteal muscles can lead to the opposite, coxa varum and genu valgus, also known as knock -kneed. The proper way to examine the knee for joint laxity is to apply valgus and varus forces respectively. Slightly flex the knee. Stabilize the proximal segment and apply force to the distal segment. For a valgus deformity, stabilize and pull the distal segment laterally, and for a Varus deformity, stabilize and push the distal segment medially. To test the elbow for joint laxity, slightly flex the elbow, stabilize the proximal segment, and hold the distal segment. If you apply a varus deformity, you're testing the radial collateral ligament. If you apply a valgus deformity, you're testing the ulnar collateral ligament. One last clinical tidbit for you. Another relatively common malformation is lateral displacement of the big toe, hallux valgus, often accompanied by a bunion. This is sometimes due to muscle tightness, joint laxity, arthritis, and is likely aggravated by poor fitting or too tight shoes. All right, thank you very much. I'd like to thank our GTAs, Lauren and Adam, for helping us out with this video. Be sure to check out Adam's YouTube channel, The Pre-Med Life, and we'll see you guys a little bit later. Happy studying!
Anyway. 